Okay, guys, so I'm going to take you a walkthrough of the tiny house uh, off-grid water system that we've uh, worked out here at Incredible Tiny Homes. And um, I'm really excited about this. I want you to understand one thing real quick is this was a demonstration today. This is going to be completely redefined. And right here, the power, um, all the power controls and stuff are going in this box here that's waterproof. But in short, how this works is that you've got the control module, you've got the air that's going to the tank here that this is demonstrating the uh, air tree that would be in the bottom of it. Uh, one last thing here on this is now this fuse, we're gonna put it back in on the fuse block and now this, here's the oxidation going into the uh, water. And that pretty much is, and then here is the, First flush filtration, it goes, the float kicks on, it takes that water out, runs through the three-stage filtration through the UV, and then back out with oxidation back to your whole tank. Please forgive the noise, the jamboree, they're kicking off the music now for this evening after the talking. Um, this is the output, so the water comes from the tank, it goes out into the structure, and with your pressure tank to help so that the pump don't have to kick on all the time. And so what we're gonna do, I'm gonna turn this on, okay? And then the float came up, and this one's kicking out the pressure off. And we'll watch the water suck down out of there. And then this one will cut off once the float gets back up, and that's it. I mean, that's pretty much it in a nutshell, guys. Um, you might want to treat your water with a little bit of Clorox from time to time. Um, also, the filtration needs to be changed depending upon how much you're using it. Um, now, you can use this two ways. You can use it drinkable um, so that the rain catch comes into this first. Then it goes into your whole tank. Then from there into your house and then discharged out away from it. Or the second option is it comes into your whole tank through your rain catch. It goes out into your system, into your house to use then kick back in here, but you won't want to drink that. That's only for washing, showering, um, and for um, doing laundry. So that's pretty much that in a nutshell, guys. Removing from the water. Okay, um, two things to keep in mind is the way this system's set up, and I'll get in more in depth on it here in a minute, is that we can run this system as long as it runs off from the house. You can drink the water, okay? You can use it for your showering and everything else, but that's as it's the water's come in, it goes directly from your rain catch into this, then into your clean storage, and then discharged off from your house. So I just wanna make sure to clarify that. That's the drinkable water, okay? If you are going to recycle that water from your house and discharge it back into your whole tank, then it's only for showering, washing your dishes, washing your laundry. Also, if you're gonna use heavy loads with the water flow, then, you know, once a week, you might wanna change your filters. Uh, twice a week, a minimum on your filter change, okay? So, I'm gonna hand this off to John in just a second. He's gonna pick up and tell you all where we come from to now, and then I'm gonna to explain to you the add-ons, but while he's talking to you, I'm gonna hand these papers out. If anybody needs an extra for somebody that's not sitting over here at the moment, just let me know, I'll be glad to give you an extra copy, okay? You know, you did so good at this earlier. I'm always an annoying one with this. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm not very loud either. <laughs> um, since the last jam, we've done major changes to the water system. Uh, originally, we started with a basic float, just like we're currently back to using. We tried to upgrade and use little circuit boards and different technology that they use in RVs and other things. Most of the time it, it would mess up as far as sensing the water because of different soaps and things like that. It, it cuts down the connectivity in the metal. So we've gone back to using an actual float but we've uh, converted over to using more of a ACDC type relay system so we could use an actual heavy 110 pump instead of just a little RV pump. 
and that makes it where the water can go a little bit faster, especially if you're using like a bathtub and get a vacuum block of air and the water stuck, it'll actually pull that out and get it through the filters at a more economical time. Um, other than that, we, we've gone with a bigger pump since last year on the fresh water. So you could use multiple things at a time in the house, like one person wants to take a shower, you want to run a sink, you, you could actually turn even the bathroom sink on and all three will be constant with water at one time. And uh, that's something that this before you could get one or two, but never all of them at the full pressure. Uh, other things that we've changed, we, we've gone with a, a little bit sleeker design box. Some of our outside units that we've done in the past were big and bulky boxes that were hard to carry. This one will fit through a regular, even down to a 32 inch door. You can walk in the house, sit it down, easy to put a pad under where it doesn't scratch the floors for transit. Um, we pretty well narrowed it down to where we have three uh, main system types. And at this jam, we actually have all three system types in the building. Uh, the Akunas, their uh, house right out the door here, it has our interior pump system with our exterior tank system. So if you go and look at it, it has all the pumps and all the pre-screening filters and everything in their tongue box with their solar. And then on their actual 500 gallon tank, it has uh, the vacuum pulling the ozonated air through and it has basically this uh, dispersion system down in the bottom of the tank so it ozonates the tank. Um, Jennifer's house on the other end, it is our complete internal system. It has an internal 141 gallon tank in her back box and then everything right here is squished in one little spot with our water heater in the back. And that, that, that's our full internal system. Our full external system is basically like this. Everything is out, it's in a box, you just run a water hose, a regular connection on the front. You could, you could even put this on an RV, it wouldn't matter. It's all, all universal for both. And, and that, that's an improvement from what we had, because at the last jam, everything was on a house. Some designs of the house, it gets a little noisy having everything right there on the front. So then we started making them in the box. The box, sometimes it would freeze, so we needed to have heated hoses, we, we'd have to do that. Basically, you would need to cycle the system to keep it from freezing. So if you don't turn the water on and cycle it, it, it would lock. So we, we kind of toyed back and forth with each idea. Um, some of the things we want to keep upgrading, and Lucas will talk more about this. And right now, the way it's set up, it filters all the gray water and it puts it back in the box. What we want to do is add it where it also filters the rainwater when it comes in at the same time. That way, every bit of it is filtered. You don't have any contaminants from the rain going into the tank, it all goes through. And we should be able to have that set up in the very near future. You ready, Lucas, for going over? That should get us back up to date. I want to uh, commend Randy and John for taking on this endeavor of doing the off-grid water, because I've done a lot of off-grid projects throughout the years for people in my own business. Water is something that is very, very, very tricky to work with. Um, lots of different situations. Um, keep in mind that most people's sickness across the world is because of waterborne pathogens, okay, and uncleanliness. So, like, this is, to, it, I mean, we're going to a deep level of testing this too. Every one of the people that's received um, these systems is getting a water testing thorough on a very deep level, um, depending on how there's a setup. Spend a lot of time on the test bench, flooding the back room, um, and doing lots of crazy stuff, experimenting, trying to see just what we can test the limits with it. Um, some things that was uh, brought forward was that uh, concern about flooding the gray box, um, the first flush. Um, you know, it might want to back up, or et cetera. We have a pump 
in place now that once we're done here, you can walk around and see it, that we actually have it integrated in a way that if you, and we'll, we'll flood this here in a minute so that you can actually see it as if it was a bathtub. We're gonna just flood it with a ton of water while also running the sink um, to uh, simulate that. Is if you wanted a bathtub in your home, you can pull the plug, it's not gonna flood your system because obviously this is lower in your house. The, the vacuum that is created on the pump, please keep in mind there, there is an air inlet there, okay, so we're not faking this. The way that goes into it, the pump holds it in check while also skimming it, and it also keeps the box from flooding and popping open. Um, the float mechanism that's in it nowadays, this is um, scaled down. We actually changed this at the time that we had finished this up. I've done some more modification. If you go down to Jennifer's house and ask her, to let you view the back. She's the first recipient of the brand new off-grid system. So she's got the total works before it goes out the door to Chicago, right? That's where she's going, I think yep. it's Chicago. Okay, yeah, I think it's Chicago. So that house right there, when it rolls out, it's got everything, all the new works, bells and whistles in it, with the exception of this new monstrous pump, because she doesn't need that because all her water is like at my house, it's at point of use. The other side of the wall is her water, so it, she doesn't need a monstrous pump to pump it in. Um, the filtration on it, John has got us some new filters coming that are even smaller micron. Um, the only thing about this is, is it's a two-edged sword. It's going to filter your water heavily, but also you're going to have to change filters you know, a lot more often because that it's going to get a lot more particulate out of your water. Um, the controls and everything for that, we've actually scaled that down to the point where it's going to, the, the new one, when you see it on one night, probably when Randy showcases it on Facebook Live or something like that, it will actually be in a water tight containment yes. unit. So you could take and open this up and just hose the whole thing down, not that you would want to do that, but just, you know, we want to prove to you that, you know, Water's not going to be an issue if you ever had something, say a pipe burst or something. It's protected. Um, and we've got it down to just two little electrical working parts. Um, and that way that if you ever had to service your equipment later down the road, you know, it's yeah. not us running across the country. We can mail you a part, you put it in, five minutes later you're back in action. Um, the pumps yeah. also yeah. in the new ready, setup yeah. that we're going to be running we can uh, we're going to pex in the pump so that it's if for some small. reason you ever had a pump failure you can unscrew it unscrew the other yeah, one right. set it out take the new yeah. one out of the box set it in screw it together no. this is where everything will be in the new electrical enclosure everything will be inside okay. of that so that that's it i mean it's very very scaled down now it's came a long way from the beginning and uh trying to think who it was, it was Dr. Seuss, I think said that sometimes the questions are complicated, but the answers are simple. And so this is a lot of complicated stuff, but at the end of the day, it, it purifies your water, okay? So to recap real quickly though, before I show you some other things, there is a way to use this that it's drinkable, but it's got to go from your rain catchment or your rain catchment barrel into this first, then out into your clean containment tank. Then from there you can drink it, you can use it for your laundry washing, yeah. for everything else, but it must be discharged from the home, okay? That's option one. Option two is the non-drinkable version, but you can use it for everything else. We're not saying you can't drink it, I'm just, we're not to that point where we want to encourage that at the moment. It's a gray water recirculation system, everything has its place in the off-grid world, okay? It's just like your solar, you're not the utility provider for your whole neighborhood at that point. You're taking care of you. So with this water system, if you use it in the second version, it can be done just like on Jennifer's house. It's completely enclosed, so she uses it, she puts it back in the tank. Um, some notes that we found with using this right now though, is on your water heater. If you're going to run this type of system, you only need to understand you gotta make one modification to your house in planning is that it needs to be an on-demand water heater, either an electric on-demand that's gonna to hook to the utility company, or a propane on-demand that you could use with the utility company or with your off-grid solar. Okay, so that's the only thing that you need to keep in mind. And the reason is, is so that the water you recirculate doesn't set in the water heater for a long time, and then you have an issue of where that needs to cycle through the system and be filled.
um, sizing the box, a lot of people asked earlier with the solar, if you look behind you at this blue house right here, you can see where the window terminates right there at the drip, drip edge. That is the amount of space that needs to be accommodated for, for your water system, and especially if you're going to put your solar and water in, okay? But it's just that area up to the window. That's, that's the only space that has to be sacrificed. Also keep in mind, anybody that sat through the solar, the new batteries only take up half the footprint anymore as the old ones, unless you want to do quadruple the battery storage that we used to have. You can achieve that with just eight batteries now. Um, okay, so the last thing that I can think of as far as um, add-ons is later work. I don't know exactly when that's going to be a couple months down the road because we got some other things to sort out. But there will be a smaller container. It's about half the length of this. How big is that container? The small one. The one put the solar in. It's like two foot, isn't it? I got you. We, we're either going to put the solar in the box with it or put it in one of the little smaller boxes like this and put the solar on it where that it can fold up and then you can use it out in the field and it's independent of your house. So that will be a standalone solar powered water filtration system in its own right. Um, the great benefit of that is if you run your house dead on your own solar system that's you know incorporated in your home, that's independent. And you can still even plug your little generator into it too and run it. So backups for your backups. Uh, the, the only other thing that I want to mention, and then I'm going to turn it back to John if he's got anything else to add to it, is um, the issues that were brought up uh, by customers and by feedback in the field of people that own the water system. We were listening, okay? It just takes time to adjust a few things out. We want to deliver the very best every time. Uh, to everyone moving forward. This is working. We've adjusted it to the point, like I said, if you go to Jennifer's house over there, she can turn her water on, turn her shower on, turn her uh, clothes washer on, drain it all out, immediately engages, immediately turns off when it needs to streamline. But it doesn't matter how good a system we put together if you don't, you know, do your due diligence to change the filtration in it. And when I say change it, I don't mean take it out, spray it, and put it back in. I mean completely remove the filters and get rid of them, put new ones in. As long as you take that personal maintenance to take care of that, you're going to have a system that's going to last you a long time. Um, we've intentionally plugged these filters up over here on the one in the kitchen, seen how far you can go to the limits to failure, like force it to fail, and the pump still keeps it from flooding but it will not continue to discharge constant. So you've got to, at some point, change those filters or it's gonna shut down. Um, that's pretty much it. If, if you got any questions, feel free to ask. When we're done talking and anything that John uh, goes over with us as well, um, we're gonna turn on the pump here and let you see how the air flows on the new tree unit that goes in the large tanks. That way you get plenty of air in your tank and bacteria don't build up. And also we're gonna run the water through this and flood it so that you see how the new suction on the system works and everything. Uh, with that said though, you got anything you want to add? Other than giving it back to Lucas in a second for your question. You to do it either. Just to add to your question too, one of the reasons it gets filtered twice, the ultraviolet part of the filtration goes through a glass tube and the way it's designed it can't handle pressure so it goes through at 15 pounds and goes through all the filters at 15 pounds none of us like a shower at 15 pounds so it goes through yet a small household filtration coming back with the heavier pump yeah that, that way everything's clean and stored clean and then it gets repressurized and goes through the house. That, that way we can enjoy our creature comforts, but the water's clean. Yeah, and, and also that's why the pump, the flow jet pump is so large because like, um, say you live in a rural place, like you've got a farm or whatever, and you got a whale, the type of unit that we've got is such a heavy duty unit, it sits on a large pressurized tank for pressurizing that, suctioning, and output pressure as well. So I mean like, 
we kind of oversize the pump for such a small structure, but at the same time, if you get in a scenario where you're like me and you set your water station out away from your house, and then your house is a, you know, further away. Say we set this here and the house is over there. It's quite a distance to travel and transit in the house. Then keep in mind you're pressurizing the hot and the cold side. So you're splitting your feed and then you're going through a hot water heater too. So that meets that demand. And then the reason the other pump is smaller, but also on a relay is because when the water comes back, all it's doing is discharging from point A to put, making sure it goes back into storage in point B, but also not flooding your house. So. Anybody got any questions? Okay, my recommendation is if you're like me and you travel a lot and you're, you're here and there, one, you know, once every two weeks is fine. If you are living in the house and you have a washer and dryer, it's a minimum every week change the filters, minimum. Um, even, even though you're not drinking it, you're just sharing with it and everything like that, it's going to lengthen the life of your pump. Um, because eventually, the, you know, in anything, your pump is going to go down over time. And that will extend a lot of life to your pump because it's not having to work so hard to push through the filtration. But once a week, if you've got a washer and dryer, if you've only just got your shower and your sink and stuff like that, then every other week could be about fine. The guys use this one over here extensively in the kitchen. Um, Randy actually told me this morning, he made me preview the fact that he forgot and left the shower on all night. Um, so it ran all night long. So like sometimes situations happen, you might want to just change the filter at least once a week with that. But if it's just normal use, every two weeks without a washer and dryer. Do what? Sorry. Cost of filters. John, what was the cost of filters? Um, there, there's multiple filters in it. Your pre-screen filters that you want to clean regularly, they, they don't cost a, a lot. We can cut them down from full sheets, and uh, I think a full sheet was 70 bucks, and that'll last you a lifetime. Um, the actual filters that go into the system, they're about 17 bucks for the most expensive one on down to 11 bucks. So you, you got a range of about 30 bucks a time. And they, they will last longer depending on how you use the water. So if you wash your dishes in a tray and throw out the leftovers so it's not filtering all the extra chemicals, the filters will last longer. Uh, if you use good natural soaps and whatnot to free and clear in the shower, it, it will still last longer. But uh, the, the more you put in it, like if, if you're sitting there cutting up meat and stuff like that in the sink and it all goes down, that, that wears on the filters heavily. So the, the more you put, the heavier it goes. Yes. As long as, okay, I'm going to answer that very carefully, because not a lawyer, not a, this is just a technical answer. As long as it's not getting recirculated back into that, and that would be discharged, I absolutely would believe that, yeah. You know, as, but with, okay, the question was, that would it meet the water standards that the gentleman was asking about, some water standards would be meet? As long as it's getting discharged from the structure and not getting recycled right back into it, yeah, I would, I would. Right. Right, yeah, absolutely, and especially sending it from the rain catch directly into it, because that's a that's a conversation me and Sherry and John's all went through. Is that the goal is eventually to transition your rain catchment directly under the house into the gray box first, and then go from there into your whole tank, and then using the house. Now, if you send it back to your whole tank, then you know that's that's null and void at that point, you know, because you've discharged gray water back into your, your clean tank.
the, the current use in the field right now, including my house, now that's how it's being used. Um, and that's one of the things with the water filter test that we want to get every bit of that back because then it's not just us saying something, it's, it is written, you know. The uh, water testing partnership that we've got with the company right now, we've held off on some of the ones out in the field until we changed over the new pumping stuff and the new filters so that we've got it exactly the way that, you know, we want it to be moving forward and then that way the exact readouts we get from it, we know what to expect from them. Right, right. I'll have to check on that and get back to you. I, I will tell you this, if you're going to use um, any water for drinking water, I have found nowhere on this earth that anybody beats Berkey on the, um, the small white filter that screws in the bottom of the carbon one. I've used that for years. You would not believe the filth that has came out of the White Pine City water. I don't care if they get mad at me about that or not. I mean, like, you skim the bottom of that and it's amazing. Uh, keep in mind that uh, fluoride is not for human consumption if you read the MSDS sheet, just saying. But for some reason it gets put in our city water. Um, but I can get into another topic on that another time. But um, <coughs> anyway, the if you're going to drink your water though, I think even on top of running it through something like this, unless it's like spring water, creek water, rain catchment, but if I was putting city water even through this, I think I would still you know, run it through one of those white filters because like I said, anything on the market, I've not seen anything on the market remove the heavy duty um, chemicals that that, that is removed, it, it's incredible. And they've been around a really long time, but just for the drinking purpose for that particular thing, I would use that on top of that. So you're saying the Berkey system, which is pouring your water in here, it's not close to that. Right. And, and that's the thing, if you're going to yeah. use the system in the manner like I'm using in the field, I'm doing two things for mine in the field. I'm collecting my water in a containment unit by itself. I have a Y branch in this plumbing right here. I have my water return from my house. I have a Y branch going into an IBC. That IBC tow collects the rainwater coming down. I can force flush that into this system on top of the water that's coming in from my house. That way I filter all that stuff out, and then I have a clean tank, even though that it's getting returned stuff from the house, I'm only using like natural soaps and natural cleaners and stuff like that. And then I'm running that back through the house for me to use. There's a creek right there next to the house, so the water I'm going to drink, I'm just gonna put that in the Berkey like I had in my other house. And that way I can, I can take the rain catch water that's right behind my house before it would've went through this, or the creek water, and drink that by itself. And that way I've always kept it segregated. And that's a real cost effective fix where that you can still have gray water usage that's plenty enough, clean enough to take a shower with and use for normal use. And then also have, you know, supply of drinking water available. Randy has had a conversation with me about um, looking into some reusable filters, something that could be cleaned out. I think though at the end of the day, you're never gonna get away with kind of what we're doing here without getting rid of at least one or two. Cause like the first unit filter I've seen like some filtration setups where they like you can take out the sponge filter, spray it down cause it's like um, coconut fiber type material or something like that. And that's all cool. 
but when you get down to like the really small micron filters it's just like just like how Berkey does it's so finite that at the end of the day it done a great job for you but it's dead and so I mean I think eventually we can meet somewhere in the middle on that but not all the way Yeah, keep in mind the components that we're putting into this, we're trying to source domestic, like the company that manufactures that's in Canada. You know, I mean, the pumps, we're trying to get, you know, American, we're trying, we're trying to stay right here close to home with a lot of that stuff, so. Okay, the uh, evacuated tubes that, uh, like the solar water heaters. The only thing about that is, is like the roof, you only got X amount of roof space, 13.6 going down the road. So when we like bolt down solar panels in the house, you're literally got like that much left before you're, you know, over your limit. And Randy's got it down to a science, like literally I've seen it before when they've let the, the spring or the, uh, suspension down it's literally just got us in the margins so like if you're going to do something like that it really needs to be accommodated for the roof somewhere on the roof the height to be a little bit lower but i've seen the solar water heating done i mean on the large house that i lived in i actually done a solar air heater and that works fine like i said some of the worst winter days are the clearest days because there's no cloud cover and it's sun shining but you know like all those things i'd always only count supplemental just like the wind turbine. I would never depend my life on a wind turbine for nothing. Um, matter of fact, I don't even know why our government invested so much money in that when we could have went solar, but that's another conversation too. But like those things, I would only look supplemental. White Pines water system, don't they get most of their water from Hamlin County? I'm not exactly certain on that, but I do know that um, there was some testing issues that they had to get retested on and you can check that out that's Amen. documented yeah so like I, I guess where i'm at with it is if you're going to live off grid and I, I really hope john jumps in on this one too is that if you're going to live off grid okay you've got to ask yourself the question is it worth it to me for me it's worth it because it's freedom i don't want to owe nobody nothing but to love them i don't need uncle sam tell me how to live i can live my own life on my own i don't need nobody telling me how to live okay but i'm very defined human being okay but when you go to taking care of your own water you really got to ask yourself how am i going to get my water because if you're going to live tiny and you're going to live off grid water is the absolute outside of air the most important thing you can have um so you know with if you're going to drink it it needs to be you need to evaluate in the beginning if i'm going to drink it how am i going to process between the two because you know if you're going to flush your water back then there needs to be an alternative from your rain catchment an additional tank to put that into some kind of water filtration but if you're not going to do that just run it off gray water flush that can take you all the way to the goal post you know and that that's out the box that way Some of your biggest indications are going to be you'll see the water slightly turn milky. You, you'll see colorations difference. You might get a smell. Like if you smell an egg smell, that's a lack of oxygen. That's one of the reasons why we have the extra ozonator in the tank to add oxygen. Uh, that's why Lucas was talking about the, the water heaters. If you use a tankless, it doesn't hold water. The tanked water heaters that hold water while it's sitting there because of the way it gets filtered it loses oxygen in the water and it makes that smell and some of the chemicals that go through the filtration system will help with that to make it have that smell so the more we keep up with the filters the less of that might bypass so any hint of anything different that's the time to go and check it out Right, yeah. Have to use your have to use your senses on it uh, because, like, 
you might take a shower every couple of days and you might drink a little bit of water and you might throw your water out the door instead of cycling it. The person next to you might be cutting a chicken apart in the sink. I mean, you know, that there's different things. None of it will be 100% the same because everyone's different. Um, but all of it's going to be noticeable. It's not going to be it's not going to be a clock. They'll ding. You'll, you'll have to look at it and see. Um, like the pre-screen filter, they're designed where you can clean them, let's say, every month. If you put a lot of big pieces down your sink or you wash your laundry with it, I would suggest every couple of days. Because even though it will filter out the bulk of it, it's still in there. The water going through it is still going through what's left in there when you can clean it out and they'll reduce what bleeds by into the main filters so the more maintenance you do the more you keep an eye on it the less you're going to have go through the filters and the less you're going to have an issue to need to change if you just drink the water and go you'll probably change filters more often any other questions I, I'm sorry, I forgot that part. <laughs> it's absolutely your coffee and tea taste. Is there, is there no small difference water, in water, 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 water. As far as like using less because the, like the chemicals that they put in the municipal waters kind of make the coffee and tea. Well, being there's less physical chemicals in it because the only chemicals that get in it are any that aren't filterable things. So pretty much you're going to have a lot purer water than what you would normally have with a city where they put chemicals to keep it clean. So does it like actually the flavor of I haven't gone through it enough to, to check on coffee. Uh, I know it will filter out the coffee if you pour it in the sink because we've done that. <laughs> but, but as far as how it uh, tastes uh, for a difference on coffee, I haven't tried that one yet. But the water, the, the times that I have tested it, it, it's pretty crisp. I mean, it, it's not that bad. So it, it shouldn't diminish the taste of uh, drinks. I hadn't tested that one yet, so we, we could run it through the filter a little bit, and if you want to grab a cup, we'll be happy to let you try it. It's, it's sitting here. It'll be, it'll be here tomorrow, too. If you want to try it, we're, we're not going to stop you. <laughs> Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. When you wash and you have lint and stuff like that, most of that's going to go through the pre-screening filters. And those are the ones that we cut out. They're literally like $2 for a filter and they're washable. So the best you can wash them, the least there's going to be in there. The, the, the deal is if anything goes past them, then it gets into your main filters. Those are the ones that are 11 12 and 13 bucks in a row and once those start to go that's when you have to order those and I, I recommend uh, I, anyone that buys a system I can give you the actual company it's the same company that's got their name on the rig for the filters and they have a one micron filter all the way across the board for each stage and that's going to get the most of the contaminants so you're, you're going to have the purest water out of that and you, you could buy them in bulk. Uh, we, we looked at it, it was about 900 bucks to buy enough filters to do 25 units. So if, if you had to change them once a month, that would be two years. And that's even including the main filter going back on the fresh water. So that was a set of four for 25, was almost 900 bucks. That ship and delivered straight from the manufacturer. And they do bulk pricing. If you wanted to go to the next step, it jumped down even more than that. 
and um, we're going to try to have filters too and the, the way we look at it we're not going to charge it what they have on the shelf if we actually send them to you it'd be the price that we're paying for the bulk so if we can buy enough of them to make it easy for you that we'll pass the savings on if you want to buy a two-year worth at one time and do them once a month you could do it that way you might get two months out of a filter if you're extra cautious and you do the maintenance you might get three days if something goes totally sideways and something sneaks in and it goes out like that so it really depends on how you handle it um, we, we got one person uh, over on the other side of the country she's still on her original filters but she's very particular with what she does We've had some that we've sent filters out and they, they lasted a month. It, it, it varies. We, we have it all across the board because everyone's different. And uh, even out of the ones we got, we got two or three different style systems. So I, I couldn't even tell you if the style mattered, if it needed to all be in the box or having it half and half. They've all had about the same. They're, they're all just a little bit different and everything hits a little bit different. Everyone, everyone uses different soaps. Everyone uses, uh, eats different things and lets things slip down the drain. I mean, every, everything's based on the person. So it makes it really hard. That's why we need the feedback. Because the more feedback we get, the more we can add. If we need to add a, a, a salt-based filter for softness or other chemicals, we, we can add it. We, we just need the feedback to know what's the most common. Uh, we added the the dispersion on the bottom of the uh, ozonator here where we got it in the box so you could see it instead of the bottom of the tank there's uh, little diffusers on there to make the water go out we, we were pumping ozone in the tank and you could smell it in the tank but those diffusers made it better and we looked at that based on one customer that her whole tank had a lack of uh, oxygen in it even though it had the ozonator it just went too fast. You could open the lid and smell it. It was like you had uh, natural gas eggs or something sitting there. But we put that in and it's, it's fixing the problem. It, it makes it not do that. That's why we were talking about the water heaters and the fact that they can kind of recreate that without having a constant movement or that constant dispersion of uh, oxygen. But that they will all prolong the life of the filters. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. My my first recommendation on that would be to email any question either to our info at Incredible Tiny Homes so the whole office knows, or if you primarily want to do it just on the water uh, or even the solar. If you start by doing Lucas at Incredible Tiny Homes, he, he, he needs to be our answer guy on all the off-grid. Now, if you want to add me on it, and I'm John at Incredible Tiny Homes, if, if he can't answer the question, I can't answer the question. We got a couple of scientists that we talked to about this, and we'll get an answer somewhere. And, and that way we're all on the same page. Even if you do all three, that way we all know what's going on. Um, what, wasn't there uh, also where they were doing, you had a couple email streams with a whole bunch of people doing it too. And anything like that, even a group stream, uh, the, the, the more and more we get, the the more answers we can come up with and the better we can make it. Uh, Sherry's trying to print out a, a manual for us and get that going, but the bad thing is we keep changing things. That she, she'll get it and get mad at us because we'll change a pump or we'll change something. She's got to start half of it over again. Say that one more time. Yeah. The, the bad thing is we'll, we'll sell a system and then change something and then it's like we got to go back and get all of them. It, 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 ma it makes it hard to do a partial. Yes, sir. People should have their water tested regardless of what county or what state they live in. I worked here for a number of years. Eastman up here, old buddy, used to have all kinds of spills. 
and rather paying game and fish for all the cleanup, they'd rather pay the fine for the spill. So you could about light a cigarette off a water fountain here two or three weeks in a row, they quarantined the water here. And that's <laughs> true. So be careful, get your water tested wherever you go. I hunt a lot all over the counties and states, and if they've got these crossbones in the skull and a from a pump, don't use it. Go to the store and buy some bottle of water. Or take it with you. That's, that's one of the reasons why we're trying to send out the tests and get all that monitored. As soon as we get everyone updated on the system, we'll start having that roll in. And that's one of the practices Lucas is going to keep up with with all our customers so we can <laughs> keep building our system as we go. You were about to say something. You want to make it? The question that was asked, I think two or three questions ago, somebody asked about a uh, noticeable change when to change your um, filters. The green pump that we've changed to now that's the heavy duty vacuum, it will stop going. Like it, it won't just completely shut down, but it will actually stop the suctioning process. And you will know like when the water kind of starts to want to back up in your shower or sink, it's definitely to the point where you most certainly need to get your filters changed at that point, which you don't want to let it run to that point. But I'm just saying that is like a definite hash off. You need to change them. Um, I think uh, Alyssa dropped a note over here a second ago that those cupcake people, anybody that's about to leave from this talk, minute, they're going to leave at 5.30. They said uh, cupcakes are a dollar if you want one before they roll out. Um, so we're going to, unless anybody else got any other questions, like field them right here. We're going to move the mic. I'm going to let John turn everything on. I'm going to get over here and get ready to flood this. And if everybody wants to just come around, get really close, we'll uh, we'll get this party started. I'm going to turn this mic off now. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, tomorrow, um, I'm going to share in another video, tours of the tiny houses and show you all that stuff and everything on the channel. Until we see you again here, Seven Trumpets Prepper Channel and um, my time here at the tiny house world at Incredible Tiny Homes. I hope you have a most blessed day in Yahushua. Yeah.